Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and this is Longshot the Dice Game, a horse racing roll and write for one to eight players. Perplexed has asked me to teach you how to play, so let's get into it. It's a beautiful day at the races in a UPA style 1930s racetrack with eight horses lined up at the post. Each horse is represented on a different card. You and your friends will take turns rolling the dice to send the ponies trotting around the track, all while placing bets on them on your dry erase player boards. You can buy helmets and jerseys for each horse to get extra benefits. You can mark coins in your concession stand to get special powers to influence the race. And you can even buy horses while they're racing in the hopes of raking in big money in the winner's circle. When the first three horses cross the finish line, you tally up all the money you've earned, and the richest player wins. The horses are numbered in order of their favor to win. Horse number one is on the inside of the track and has the shorter distance to travel, while horse number eight is on the outside. So that horse has the greatest odds, the long shot. Beginning with the start player and going clockwise, the active player rolls two dice, an eight-sided die and a six-sided die. The eight-sided die tells you which horse will move, and the green die tells you how many spaces it will go. But each horse is connected to one of these cards, and the cards have X's on other horses. Those X's tell you which other horses will move along with that horse. So if horse number one, chain reaction, moves any number of spaces, then horse number six, miracle worker, will move one space as well. You always move the horses in order from the lowest number to the highest number. Now only the active player rolls the dice, but all players get to take an action. The suite of actions you can take is here. Everyone picks one action, performs it, and then the dice get passed to the next player going clockwise. Here's what the actions do. Actions. The action you're performing is always in relation to the horse number that was rolled. So if horse number four, early word special, was rolled, and you choose to take the buy horse action, you're buying early bird special. Decrement your cash by the cost of the horse and take the card. Each horse you buy gives you a special ability. And if a horse you own ends up in the winner's circle, you get a cash bonus at the end of the race. You're not allowed to buy a horse that's already finished the race, and you can't buy a horse someone else owns. By taking the bet action, you can bet up to three bucks on the horse that just moved. Again, decrement your money and write the amount you're betting in that horse's square. If you've already bet on that horse in a previous turn, you can increase your existing bet. If you buy a jersey for the horse that just moved, place a little X in its jersey space. Then you get to place an X on that horse's card to make it drag one of the other horses along with it whenever it moves. So if there's a horse you're favoring, you can increase its odds of winning by lashing its movement to other horses. If you buy the helmet for the horse that just moved, mark an X in its helmet space. There's this red no bet line on the racetrack. Once a horse has crossed that line, you're no longer allowed to bet on it because it's too close to the end of the race. But if you own the helmet for that horse, you can break that rule and bet on that horse on a future turn, even if it's past that line. The most complex action is the first one on the list, the concession. If you take that action, you can cross out a coin in this array matching the number of the horse that just moved. If you manage to cross out a full row or a column, you get to pick one of these prizes below and cross it out. Extra money up here, free bets here, just increment your bet on any horse by three bucks without touching your cash in hand, get any horse's helmet or jersey here and here, buy any available horse for free, you still can't buy a horse that's already finished the race, or a horse that someone else owns. And these spaces allow you to move one or two horses forward or back the indicated number of spaces. A horse can only win the race by moving due to a dice roll, or by its secondary movement of having an X on another horse's card. You can never send a horse to the winner's circle by using one of these move ahead concession perks. So if number three, Scattershot, was two spaces from finishing, and you landed this concession perk, you can only move Scattershot one place, just behind the finish line. You can't use one of these abilities to move a horse backwards behind the finish line. If you manage to complete more than one row or column in the concession stand in one go, you get to claim multiple prizes. You don't get a prize for completing a diagonal. Timing can be important in this game, so you should take your actions in turn order, going clockwise from the active player. Once the third place horse crosses the finish line, no other horses can finish the race. The farthest they can go is to nose up against the line, even if their secondary movement 
or a certain player power would send them across the line. The wild horseshoe spaces down here give you a little wiggle room. If you cross one off, you get to perform an action involving any horse. You're not bound by the horse number that was just rolled. If you get into a situation where there are no legal moves you can possibly make, you can erase one of your horseshoes to free it up for a later turn. And that's your whole action for this turn. Scoring! When the first three horses cross the finish line and take their place in the winner's circle, you tally up your cash to find out who came out on top. First, if you owned any of the winning horses, you get 35, 25, or 15 bucks, depending on where your horse placed. And of course, those totals stack if you own multiple winning horses. Next, for every set of helmet and jersey you collected on any horse, you get five bucks. Then you tally up your bets. For each horse that you bet on that wound up in the winner's circle, you take the amount you bet and multiply it by that horse's odds to win. So if horse number five, Charlie Horse, came in second, and you bet four bucks, you multiply four by Charlie Horse's second place odds. So you win 24 bucks for betting on Charlie Horse. For any horse that was past the red no bet line when the race ended, you get your bet back. So if you bet two bucks on horse number seven, better safe than sorry, then because that horse crossed the line, you write two bucks in the rightmost box. In the last scoring box, you write down your cash on hand. Tally it all up for your total score, and the richest player wins. If two or more players are tied, whichever player owns the horse that placed the highest wins. Set up. To set up the game, line up all the horses in order from the inside track to the outside. Everyone gets a player board and a dry erase marker. Shuffle up the starting cards and deal one to each player. These cards let you mark a few initial concessions on your board and give you a couple of free bets on two certain horses. Everyone starts with $12. Lay out the eight cards representing each horse. The horses come in different sets. My copy of the game had an apple core set and a gate set. You can play with one set or the other, or mix and match the sets, as long as there's only one card for each numbered horse. The first player is whoever has the biggest tattoo of Seabiscuit. Power. Here's a quick run through of the special powers you get when you buy the horses in either the Apple Core or Gate sets. Number one, Chain Reaction, lets you mark any concession coin whenever you complete a vertical concession column. Number two, Too Lucky, earns you two bucks whenever she's rolled. Number three, Scattershot, lets you mark a coin on your concession stand that's one number off of the horse that was rolled. So, if number five was rolled when you take the concession action, you could cross out a four, a five, or a six. Number four, early bird special. When you take the betting action, if it's your first time betting on the horse that was ruled, you get to place your presumably $3 bet for free. Number five, Charlie horse, lets you move any horse back one space whenever you complete a horizontal concession row. Number six, miracle worker, lets you mark any single concession coin, helmet, or jersey when you buy him. Number seven, better safe than sorry, gets you an additional two bucks for every horse you bet on at the end of the race, whether or not those horses placed. And number eight, Nitro Nelly, lets you move a horse ahead one spot whenever you buy its helmet. And here come the horses in the gate set. Number one, row your boat, gets you two bucks when you complete a horizontal concession row. Number two, make it rain, gets you a free one dollar bet on all even or odd numbered horses when you buy him. Number three, Cook the Books, gets you a free $1 bet on any horse whenever you take the betting action. Number four, Mint Condition, lets you bet up to two bucks of your own money on the horse that was ruled whenever you buy a horse's helmet. Number five, Bottom Dollar, lets you recoup the money you bet on horses that didn't pass the no bet line. Number six, Dirty Laundry, lets you buy the jersey for any horse you've placed a bet on when you take the jersey action. Number seven, cheer up, buttercup, lets you move the rolled horse ahead three spaces whenever you bet on it, and only if that horse is in last place, or is tied for last. And finally, the long shot. Number eight, Donut Dolly, gets you an extra space whenever you cash in a concession to move one or two horses ahead or back. Solo mode. The one-player version of Longshot the Dice Game has you squaring off against racing tycoon Roland Wright in a shameless crossover appearance. Roland gets this AI board and a starting card. You mark off his starting bets, but he doesn't have any concessions to mark off. 
He also arrives at the track significantly richer than you, with 20 bucks cash in hand. Every round, you roll the dice and take your turn as usual. To determine what Roland does, look at the intersection of the numbers on the green die and the horse die, and do that thing. Sometimes the box will have a horse die icon in it, so you re-roll the horse die to complete Roland's action. If the action is impossible to complete, Roland performs the asterisk action at the bottom of the column. Roland buys horses a lot in the actions in the one column, but he doesn't get to use their special powers. Sometimes Roland can perform his action on multiple horses. In that case, you favor the lowest numbered horse. When the race is over, tally up Roland's score and compare it with your own. Whoever wound up with the most money wins. And now you're ready to play Long Shot the Dice Game. And they're off. And they're off. And they're off. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.